smile so bright with eyes like these diamonds Caution, I know I should have known Welcome to a yogurt sit and chat I'm eating, this is gonna be like a little mukbang Have I ever done a mukbang on this channel? I don't think so So yeah, let's eat and talk I don't have very much to eat um, have you ever had like one of those nights where you're like hungry, but you didn't really want to do anything about it? That's me right now. Um, yeah, so I'm eating light and fit Greek yogurt, blueberry. I put in some granola. Um, I can't remember. I didn't track it. I know I have enough points for this because the yogurt's two points. Granola. I can't remember if it's five or six points, and that's about all I had left for the day anyway. Um, and so, yeah. So I wanted to come and do this little check-in. I feel like I committed to you guys to keep you up to date with my um, artist way journey. And so at minimum, I need to come and finish this conversation, no matter what I decide to do with the media of social. So the last time we talked, I think it actually wasn't on an Artist Way podcast or YouTube video. Um, but I kind of talked about the Artist Way a little bit. I think it was on a video where I was just kind of giving you some life updates and just new things and things that have been on the horizon. And at the end, I made a comment about how I could just kind of feel myself being dysregulated and kind of going into like a low season and that just in general i actively try to be like a positive person because it just requires too much energy to be negative when i don't have to be like i'm just the kind of person if i'm going if i'm able to see the bright light or the bright line i'm gonna look for it if um you know, I'm able to put a solution in place, I'm gonna figure that out. Like it's easier for me to just work on mindset stuff and solutions rather than to just be upset and sad all the time. But then I also said that sometimes it's just part of life where you have seasons where you just don't feel great or things happen um, and you just have no choice but to accept that situation and um, feel those feelings. We're human. And we're gonna have to fill all the things and so I was saying that um, despite this effort for me to try to be like typically a positive person I kind of feel myself dipping um, due to some environmental factors and I'll just leave it at that also made some comments that Usually when I kind of go into like one of my little dips or whatever, um, the first thing to go is usually things for myself, like my self care stuff. I stop caring so much about like my appearance, even though I love to like dress up and put on makeup and you know do all the things. I stop caring as much. I just all of a sudden don't have energy for it. You guys know that I'm on a health and wellness journey and I just stop caring about that. And um, yeah, and I just kind of felt myself kind of, even with this artist way journey, I've been keeping out my morning pages, but there was a weekend when I was just like, I don't even want to do this anymore, it's stupid, you know? And um, I just decided to read the book because that has been one of the things I've enjoyed about this journey is Julia Cameron. I feel like every time I talk about it, I always forget her name, but I think I, think I got it right this time. I really enjoy her writing style and I really feel like the specificity in which she writes it makes me feel public not publicly personally pointed at and she kind of is has a way of being able to show that the way you're thinking about things like there's a fundamental flaw in the way that you're thinking about it and it's not healthy and it's not um you know, helping you get where you want to go. And she's really good at that. So I always find myself looking forward to reading the book. So the weekend that I 
kind of like stopped doing my morning pages. I was like, I don't even care about this anymore. It's so stupid. I just so happened to read a chapter where I think she was just encouraging it. I think she called it like an artist drought or a creative drought or something like that, where just something comes along and you're just not feeling it anymore. And she said that, you know, if, you know, that it happens, you know, it's understandable. But if you're going to do anything, make sure that you continue your morning pages. Like, if you don't want to create, you don't want to, you know, do your thing, whatever, just make sure that you don't give up the writing. Like, you have to show up for your morning pages. And um, it was a compelling heck of an argument, very compelling argument. So I was like, fine. Like, I will do these morning pages, even though I don't really want to. And, um, I just noticed that it, like, she's right, like, the morning pages kind of created this trickle effect in my life. Because I would take time to do the morning pages, and then it's like, it just, it was like, kind of like depositing a little token of, um, I don't know what the word is but it's like kind of like I added a deposit into my energy bank even though I didn't want to do it and then I had energy to be like well let me go do this next thing I don't know take a walk and that like added a deposit into my life you know even though I didn't want to okay let me go exercise and that added a deposit into my day let me get dressed and like feel put together and that added a deposit a deposit in my day that helped me do the next thing and um, I just noticed that like the more deposits I put into myself, like the better that I started to feel. And I love this for myself because, you know, I think that sometimes, especially like in a slump that I'm kind of, that I was feeling myself going into, um, the environmental concerns have not been completely resolved. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is it's, I feel like that could have been a situation where I could have easily um, kind of been in a not so great place and kind of remain there and kind of been like I'm just gonna be sad until everything's back to perfect and normal and blah 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 I could have easily done that but I feel like this book and doing the morning pages and consistently trying to do something nice for myself doing the artist dates learning that I don't have to make all of my decisions from a logical place I can do things because I'm interested in it and it moves me and it you know piques my interest and like I can make emotional decisions and doing things that feel like not logical but that make me happy I really feel like it helps me like bounce back in a way that I wasn't expecting um and so that's not to say that I'm like fully like back, back to normal, duh, duh, duh. but like, I don't know, it's just been really different. And, um, it, this situation has, um, really made me just like have a sense of appreciation for like the morning pages in this process and like the benefits to your mental health. Um, you know that can come from journaling like I just really have an appreciation for that and so one thing that I don't know if I've ever disclosed on my channel before is that I care about mental health a lot because like my mom you know um, oh I see my battery's dying that's great what do let me try to say what I'm gonna say my mom was a single mom of four children and like my dad you know wasn't like a present parent and I'm sure actually he was but when he was present it was not great and then he we had that and then we had time where he wasn't present and I feel like I can understand that that must have been incredibly just stressful for my mother um, and my mom, unfortunately, is not like a big, doesn't get, doesn't have a huge role in my life and hasn't for a very long time because I feel like she kind of turned to drugs and drug addiction to like cope with, you know, the anxiety, the stress and those feelings like that just kind of gave her maybe temporary relief or a way out. I don't know. I've never done drugs. 
but I just feel like for me um, I try to really prioritize it because like I got to watch her go down that slippery slope of like substance abuse and things like that to cope with really hard challenging feelings and um you know I don't know if she knows or cares of like how that you know already impacted me and how that already sent me into the world um in a not so like emotionally stable place and then it's like now you add that plus just the stress of being a person being alive then you add it on top of that you know my neurodiverse babies and my food allergy babies and you know just life is hard you know and so I just say all that to say that I really try to take care of myself in that area because I witnessed somebody who should be here um, go down a very slippery slope and maybe it's because she didn't have the time or the capacity or the awareness to um, prioritize self-care and mental health in her own life. And I don't take those things for granted. I'm not like one of those people that's here like, oh, like, oh my God, like be positive, be happy because everything goes right in my life. I'm like, I need to take care of myself because I have seen what happens when, you know, as moms, we can just be giving, giving, giving martyrs, never taking care of ourselves. And I've seen just an example of how, um, you can actually suck the life out of yourself and then you're actually no thing that um, I've seen where a situation very close and personal where um, it's like you just give so much of yourself and you can literally suck the soul and the life out of yourself where you're not good for anybody you're not good for you can't take care of yourself and you can't even no longer be helpful to the people that it's like you sacrificed yourself for you sacrificed yourself for us and now you've done it to the point where you can't even be there you know for those people because you didn't take time to take care of yourself in the process so that's why like health mental health self-care all those I don't take those things for granted and I like try to actively just educate myself about things and just try to like be in tune with that kind of stuff Anyway, um, yeah, I just feel like in a lot better headspace, and it's been hard for me to kind of show up and do an update on my artist dates because, like, I didn't want what just happened now to happen. I didn't want this to turn into like a therapy session, and for you know the whole internet to be trying to psychoanalyze me or whatever. But like I said, I wanted to share that this book played a huge role. And the way that I addressed it this time um, and so that was really cool other breakthroughs um, I guess I can't go through all of them but I feel like I really have gotten an opportunity to reconnect with what brought me to YouTube social media content creation I realized that my purpose here is just to be a documenter, right? I know that I want to help like myself, my former self, and create the kind of videos that I wish um, I would have been able to find when I was like really having a hard time transitioning into motherhood. And I know that that's one of the reasons, but the the primary reason I believe that I started my channel was just to be a documenter. Um, you know, I don't really have like a lot of pictures from my like childhood. And because of that, I started like, um, like nobody thought it was important to like keep that those records of me. Um, and so when I was in high school, I 
became like the kind of person that always had like a little one of those little disposable cameras like I didn't have like very much money but I made sure to save money so I could take pictures and just kind of like document because I wanted something to be able to look back on I wanted something to be able to like show my kids you know and um Even, oh gosh, my college pictures. I don't even know where those are. Those were like all digital before the cloud. That breaks my heart. But yeah, I just document a lot of things. And also, I think that when I started video creation, it's like not only did it allow me to like document, which is very important to me, but it also gave me an opportunity to like have like more appreciation for like the small moments you know when you like edit and you do the music and you just catch things maybe in the replay that you didn't even notice when you were like recording the video to begin with and I just really love like being able to like kind of like people say romanticize your life because like when you're in the thick of it and you're doing all the things it's so easy to take your flashlight of focus this is a metaphor that i heard online that i always use with my son it's like what are you focusing on it's like there's so many different things you could focus on right and um but you get to choose where you put your focus you know and your focus is kind of like a flashlight like what are you going to focus on and sometimes it's very easy to put your flashlight on like the challenges and the difficulty and like how tired I am and how much there is to do and why is no one helping me that sometimes you forget to like or you don't put your flashlight on like the beauty of that season as much as you should and then it's like you know a whole chapter passes by years pass by and you're looking back on your life and you're like oh my gosh like that was actually really beautiful season I wish I would have like enjoyed it more I wish I would have enjoyed my kids more like look how small they were oh my gosh I can't believe it almost feels like I wasn't even there and so I, that's what video does for me and like content creation is it encourages me to like yes be in this season yes embrace the suck go through the harder things but it just gives me a moment to like slow down and to put my flashlight on the things that I'm like grateful for in this life, which is like my family, um, our health, you know, like the fact that we're here, we're alive, you know, because I know that it's not going to be this way forever. Like, you know, like we're not going to be this season is not going to last forever. And it just gives me an opportunity to really just like kind of be in the moment and um so yeah that's why I kind of got into it I started getting into video creation in like college and like back then YouTube it was before YouTube was monetized and even like the people that would like create content it wasn't like trying to be like show off and stuff like it was for like people who maybe were like low-key nerdy in real life and like you could go connect with like other nerdy people like via video and even if you didn't make videos like you were watching their videos um you know while other people were out living their normal social life <laughs> and it's like you started to kind of feel like a community and I wanted to be a part of that you know and so I would like record these videos and like edit them in fun ways and like I just enjoyed like looking back on the memories and all the things and I think that that is like literally like the truest part of like who I am online I'm just a lady who wants to document and appreciate the small moments in our life and if my process and my journey and my revelations help someone in the process that's like even icing on the cake and I hope that just you know me sharing my process and my journey to somebody who's like you know where I was a couple of years ago I hope that even just that you know is enough to like spark ideas and be like oh maybe I could approach it like this or oh I never thought about it like that 
And I realized that just sharing the process is enough. Like sharing the journey, sharing the ups, sharing the downs, sharing, you know, the stories, revelation, that's enough. Like, and I think what happened is along the way, I started watching like all these videos about how to do this. You need a content calendar. You need to have, you know, this kind of structure to your video. You need to think about SEO. You need to provide value. You need to do all the, and I think that somewhere along the way, like I lost the truest essence of like why I want to be here because I was trying to do it like everyone else was telling me that I should do it. And I feel like that's probably what created that conflict that you guys heard me talking about between like, I feel like I'm supposed to be here. Like I can't, I feel horrible when I don't show up, when I don't create. But I don't like being here either and I can see why because I wasn't doing it the way that felt good to me which was just to be a documenter. I'm a life documenter. I'm a historian <laughs> for myself and my family and um, I feel like yeah over the last couple weeks I feel like that that's what I want to get back to and so you know I know I tried to do the podcast route and I'm so glad that I took that path because it's always been something I've been curious about. And, you know, trying to create content in the way that everyone says that you should create content. I was like, this actually makes the most sense for me because Laura knows, you know, I'm supposed to show up two to three times a week. And I don't always be looking put together. My house don't always be looking decent. My kids don't always be quiet. This must be like the easiest form of content I could create. And it's like I tried it and I'm so happy that I did because contrast creates clarity. I like, guess I want to be able to share the stories, but it's not video. It's not me like be, it doesn't allow me to like capture and quote unquote romanticize my life. And I hope that when I say romanticize my life, it's not coming off as I want you guys to romanticize my life or that I want it to come off perfect. Um, no, it's just for me to like, you know, be able to relive those moments or whatever, but, and look, have things to look back on in the future, you know, but podcasting doesn't allow me to do that in the way that feels like the purest to my soul. And so whether YouTube is the place that I'll be a documenter, I don't know. It could be YouTube, it can be Instagram. I just don't feel like, I don't know if TikTok is like a good fit for me right now, but, but I do know that. And all this time, you know, I've been trying to you know, follow along in the book. She's like, you need to enjoy the journey. Stop thinking about so much about the end prod product. There was like an even, you know, and this is like crazy. There was even like a day where I was writing in my journal, you know, she was talking about like, enjoy the process. It's like going on a date with your inner child and it's time to play. Like it shouldn't be like this heavy thing. And I was like, you know what I realized? I enjoy learning about content. I enjoy like learning about the strategies. Cause I do a lot of this for my job. I enjoy that. But like when it comes down to like thinking and brainstorming the content creation part out, like I don't even want to do it anymore. And I was like, do you even want to be a content creator? Like I asked myself that and it's just so funny because I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. I just want to be a documenter, you know, and just document the aspects of my life that I feel like sharing. Um, obviously it can't be everything, but like I'm trying, I'm in the middle of some pretty significant lifestyle changes and documenting I think helps other people, but also helps me, you know? And so, yeah. So yeah, I wanna get back to that and just try to not get so weighed down this time by like everybody's input about how I should create my channel, what my channel should be, how I should, like, I would love to grow, but it's not worth it 
for the sake of my mental health and we've already talked about how i prioritize that it's not worth it if i have to like be somebody that i'm not supposed to be if i have to make content that doesn't feel good to me and it's not that i have to feel like good all the time you know i know that um you know everything is gonna have its ups and downs and challenging parts but i am not i've never my soul is not for sale on social media <laughs> like i have a real job and um you know i'll just let them pay me <laughs> And I create here because I want to inspire myself, inspire others, and like I said, document the journey. So um, so if that means that I sacrifice growth or whatever, you know, it is what it is. Um, today I was like chilling in bed, taking a little break. And I don't know, something just told me to like, go back and look at like some of my early YouTube videos. And the videos that I think the videos I enjoyed the most were just like vlogs and stuff and going back and seeing like my little toddlers and my even my big boys like they were so small it doesn't even feel like that long ago that I made those videos and that's what I that's what they're there for just to be able to like like go back and have that moment of appreciation like wow and um wow that car is really loud but yeah those are the videos that I enjoyed the most um, are like the vlogs and I think at the time when I used to create videos like that I used to feel like pretty insecure because I'm like oh my gosh like my personality some days I'm like chill like this right and some days I'm just like a little loud and jumpy and cracking jokes and just being silly and at the time I was insecure because like in our niche like motherhood niche everybody's always so serious and like polished and poised and put and i felt like my personality is just like so contrast like people are gonna think that this is so cringe and when i go back and watch those videos i like literally was like cracking up at myself <laughs> and i realized that that's what i like most about my videos is the cringeness right i also sometimes feel like i don't want to make video because um my house looks crazy sometimes, you know, and I don't want to just like bust my camera open. And I think that because I talk about homekeeping and stuff, I don't know if I've created this impression that my house is just like clean all the time. No, look at this. Y'all see my bathroom? No, it's not. That's why I talk about all the systems and things like that. Not to teach you how to have a spick and span house but because i understand what it's like for your house to get you know out of control just because you take one day off that's what happened to my bathroom i just stopped messing with it over like yesterday it was saturday usually saturdays i feel like i have to be so responsible i have to cook and clean and do hair I took Saturday off. I was like, I'm not being responsible today. We went thrifting. And I just chilled and I literally, I didn't even cook. I was like, y'all eating chicken nuggets? I'm not doing anything. I took the day off. And this is what happens when I take the day off. We are just not a naturally tidy family. But I don't panic on over stuff like that like I used to because I'll be like, oh my God, it's so messy. It's gonna be so hard to clean. I have systems in place so that I can be able to respond to the things that just happen in our house and not feel overwhelmed about it, you know. Now I have a plan of action. I know exactly how I'm gonna take care of that mess and it literally causes me no stress, no headache. And so all the systems, all these things, I have them because I need them. Like I am not like a tidy guru. So sometimes I feel like pressure even just too like as a person i don't really just be showcasing all my like messy moments and stuff like that because my house doesn't always look messy it doesn't always look clean most of the time it looks somewhere in between and it's a spectrum you know and so um but yeah i feel discouraged from recording when my house is looking cray 
and then sometimes too you know how you can just kind of like turn the camera to avoid the mess I feel like that's deceptive and I don't want to do that and so but yeah I'm gonna have to get over that crap you know um I don't know I'll figure out another way but yeah um yeah so oh one thing that she said about those creative droughts too is that you know the most important thing is just to survive like you don't have to get through it in a particular way it doesn't have to be pretty poised polished you just need to get to the other side and um yeah the the pages are supposed to help you do that but anyway i'm getting really sleepy guys i just wanted to come and let y'all know that artist way we're still here we're coming in strong i think i'm on chapter 10 this week and um it's a book that i highly recommend oh let's talk about artist dates that i've done over the last couple weeks number one i bought my first plant i've always wanted to be a plant mommy but i convinced myself i couldn't keep a plant alive and that it wasn't worth trying and so since that is something that reoccurs and keeps coming back to me i decided that it's time um also i realized that another thing that keeps coming to me that i have not um taken any action toward is i want to learn how to like refurbish furniture and stuff i'm not sure if i actually would like the process or if i just want to save money and have like nice quality stuff <laughs> And so I think I just need to do a project, like a small project, just to see how I feel about it. Um, and so in an effort for to do that, that's why we went thrifting yesterday. I went to see if I could find furniture and I didn't find anything, but I mean, I didn't find what I was looking for. Oh my gosh, I'm getting sleepy. What else did I do for our artist date? I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I've been keeping up my artist dates, okay? You guys know I bought the little tea set. Uh, I bought the plant. I went thrifting to look for the stand. I didn't find anything. I think that's about it. So yeah, those have been going well as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Thank you guys so much for watching this little check-in. Still don't know what the future of my channel is going to be. Um, but I'm so glad to have this breakthrough and to like kind of relieve myself. Like it literally feels like shedding off a skin of like bull crap and I'm glad to be in that place and not only that, but I'm glad to have documented it. Oh, one of the exercises that we had to do, which I'm not finished is go back and read like our, um, morning pages from the past. <laughs> And I, it kind of freaked me out the day that I did it because I just wrote like this breakthrough moment down. I think it was what we were just talking about in terms of me and content creation. Just to realize that I wrote something very similar like eight weeks ago and I was like, excuse me. And it kind of brought to light that I wonder if there's a lesson I'm supposed to be learning here. And um, I'm wondering if the screen is making, my straw is making my screen blurry. If there's a lesson I'm supposed to be learning here and like I learn it and then I keep forgetting it so I was like I'm glad I'm documenting this process so hopefully I don't forget it anyway I gotta go to bed y'all talk to you in the morning